Now we're going to be having a look at the dynamics section of the mastering process. So what are dynamics? Uh, within the mastering context, when we're thinking about dynamics, we're looking at the difference and the ratio between the loudest and quietest points in the mix. Not necessarily the difference between the breakdown and the drop, but actually whilst the tune is playing and you can hear all of your instruments going off, is there a range of volumes that gives the impression of space that allows the speakers to move in a dynamic way? Uh, do we need to apply some subtle compression to pull these peaks in together to create a more rounded mix? Which is why we would think about compression. It's all about smoothing out the mix so you can turn up the volume a little bit, but whilst controlling the, uh, the louder peaks and gluing everything together in a solid sort of harmonic state. So choosing the right effects is important. Uh, lots of different compressors can work differently. There's a few different options within Ableton, for example, where you can have the normal compressor, the glue compressor, or the multiband dynamics. And also within uh, Logic, there's a whole bunch of dynamic, dynamics options from the compressors and multiband compressors. We can also use sidechain EQ on our compressors, which means that you're EQing the signal that drives the compressor circuit. You're not EQing the sound itself, but for example, you can take the low end out of the signal that's driving the compressor, which means that it's not going to be acting on the louder bass frequencies, which will reduce the amount of pumping that occurs when we're applying compression to the master. We're also going to be having a look at the multiband dynamic sections where you can have different frequency bands that can be compressed in different amounts. We'll move into Ableton now and have a look at these. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply a glue compressor to this channel. And you can see that it's not doing anything by default. If I pull the ratio down, because we don't want to be applying a large amount of gain reduction with this compressor, you'll see that the needle starts to move a little bit. Uh, this is because it's an analog uh, emulation and the uh, input volume threshold is actually a little bit lower than 0 dB on this particular plugin. This is fine because we do want to be applying subtle compression. And if we reduce the range here, it reduces the amount of gain reduction that's available. So we can see we're just slightly tickling the needle here it's a good idea to have a fairly long attack so that the track doesn't pump and a fairly short release which will let go of the compression effect as the signal drops below the threshold. So it's applying a little bit of gain reduction. I'm going to bring the threshold down a little bit more and you can hear the effect is very very subtle. just sort of sticks the sound together. And you can hear the overall volume is more contained. Perhaps it's pumping a little bit. So I'm going to pull the release up and also increase the threshold a little bit, which means it's going to be acting less upon the signal. So this is sounding pretty great. contain the snare drum nicely within the uh, sort of presence of the kick. As well as controlling the hats. However, we can notice that there is a fairly noticeable pumping effect. I'm going to click on the expansion button here and I'm going to use an EQ to EQ the signal going into the compressor. You can't hear this EQ, it's literally just EQing the sidechain signal into the compressor, compressor uh, gain reduction system. And if you preview it, you can hear what is driving the compressor. So using this, I'm taking all of the frequencies below 200 hertz, it's gonna write 200 in here, out of the signal driving the compressor. You'll notice that the gain reduction has become less and the signal is holding together far more tightly. It's still controlling the snare drum and keeping it nicely in balance with the kick and hats.
It has reduced the volume slightly, so we can use the makeup gain to turn it back up again. And having a look in the mixer, we can have a look at our available headroom. And we're doing really well, we've got plenty. So even though it's only acting less than a decibel on this signal, the effect that it's having on the overall vibe of the master is really, really important and impressive. Uh, at high volumes, you'll be able to hear this really, really well, but even at low volumes, it, it's pretty apparent. Now we're going to have a look at the multiband dynamics. I'm going to drag the plugin into the chain here. Oops. Here we have a three band dynamic dynamics processor. You've got a high band with input and output, a mid band with the same, and a low band. You can define which frequencies are sent to which band using the crossover here. You can mute and solo each of the bands. I'll demonstrate that. So I can solo the high band, and we can only hear the treble, as defined by this crossover frequency. So everything above this frequency is going to this band. You can hear, you can hear more low end when I drag it down, and less as I drag it up. If I turn off the solo, you can hear everything again. So the compressor is not currently acting on anything. I'm going to click on the A button here, which shows the above section. Uh, if I drag up and down in this box, you'll see that the ratio changes here. If it goes, uh, if I drag downwards, the ratio goes upwards, creating compression. And if I drag it upwards, it the ratio goes down, creating expansion. Anything below one to one will create expansion. So if I press play at the moment, nothing's going to be happening. I'm going to drag the threshold down so that we can see that the compressor is acting on some of these peaks right here. If I drag this upwards, you can hear it'll get louder. And if I drag it downwards, you'll hear it'll get quieter. Everything above this threshold is being reduced in volume by this ratio. So in order to make the top end sound a little bit more solid, I'm actually going to use expansion here. So I'm going to drag this uh, upwards and make sure that this ratio is below 1 to 1. And as I do so, the treble will become louder and more apparent. I'm going to affect the frequencies above about 3 kilohertz here. As you can hear, it's just capturing the top end of the snare and a nice bit of the percussion. And that's made the top end, if I disable it, a lot more powerful. It's also increased the relative volume quite a lot, so we can um, decrease the output level a little bit. Let's have a look at the mid-range. I'm going to solo it here. It is sounding pretty solid, but I'm just going to have a look at maybe compressing some of the peaks and then bringing the level up. So I'm going to drag the threshold down here. Drag this uh, downwards to create compression. And then increase the gain very slightly to com compensate and take the solo off. Disable the plugin and hear if it's doing any good. seems to be. I'm not so convinced by this compression. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. So it's only a very slight compression and increasing the volume at the mid, so I'm going to turn the output of the tops up as well. The T tab shows you the timing of the attack and release of each of these plugins. I actually feel that default settings are fairly good for this mastering process, so I'm going to leave them as they are, but if you feel that anything sounds like it's pumping or is uh, creating any sort of unnecessary rhythmic effect, you might want to have a look at playing with the attack and release of these sections. You only need to use the ones that you're actually using. Increasing the attack a little bit allows the uh, top end to breathe. Actually, that sounds quite nice, so I'm going to drag this upwards and disable the multibands here. Okay, that's sounding pretty great. Uh, we've also got an amount knob here, so we can check how much the, uh, so we can change how much the compressor is affecting the signal overall. Rather than being a mix, this changes just the, the amount. So you don't have to uh, go in here and tweak all of your uh, 
levels if you only want to um, decrease the effect that the compressor is having. So by turning this all the way down to zero, it's having zero effect. At 50, it's doing 50% of the gain uh, reduction or increase, and at 100, it's doing 100%. This can be a really useful way to figure out whether or not you're uh, doing any good to the signal. And also allow you to dial back your settings if you're feeling that you've overcooked it, but you don't want to adjust many of these settings. 